There we go. Hey everyone, welcome to the May 24th Release Engineering Subproject Meeting. Uh, my name is Jeremy, I'll be the host today. Um, just a reminder before we get going that this meeting is covered by the Kubernetes Code of Conduct, so please be mindful of what you say. Uh, this meeting will also be recorded and will be posted to YouTube for everyone to view later on. So if you're uncomfortable being on YouTube, um, here's your warning to turn your camera off, uh, participate otherwise um, via text or, or chat. I've dropped the, oh, thanks James. Uh, I didn't see James to drop the, uh, the agenda in the chat. Uh, so feel free to bring that up if you would uh, like to, to follow along. And with that, um, oh yeah, one more reminder, uh, if you are attending, feel free to drop your name into the attendees list. So we just have a record of who's here. And with that, um, we'll start off with welcoming any new attendees. Um, if this is your first time attending a SIG release, uh, release engineering or any SIG release meeting, um, feel free to introduce yourself or if it's been a while and you'd like to say hello again, uh, this is your opportunity to do so. I think most folks here are familiar, but never know. All right, uh, so we'll move on from that one. Uh, release manager updates. Uh, Veronica, do you wanna take that one? Yes, uh, hi. So yeah, we have multiple updates. So today, for example, Carlos is cutting multiple patches. Uh, <laughs> we're waiting. He has a stellar job, <laughs> uh, very fast, uh, but I think we're now waiting for confirmation of the Google failed admins. Uh, that, that was until like 10 minutes ago. I don't know if in real time that's, that has changed. Um, so yeah, so we have that. Also last week, I tried to do the best as I could reviewing cherry picks um, for the different branches uh, to like admittedly, uh, in the past cycle, we did a very, we, we fell short uh, on reviewing cherry picks um, on time. Uh, we, like admittedly, we, we, we had a lot of things to do. So this time uh, we, we really <laughs> tried to stay on top. Um, there were a few that I personally couldn't uh, finish, but I, I probably someone else did. And yeah, so I think that's, uh, we, we, we're going to have, I think we discussed this last um, meeting, um, but I don't know, I, I haven't been on top of, of this side of things, um, but I'm going to mention it again, that we have the alpha cuts and uh, the next uh, release cuts uh, scheduled soon. I don't have the dates in, right, right now in, in my mind, but we have to assign people to them. Um, so if uh, I'm, I'm going to check the channel and if that hasn't been addressed, I will, um, I will post it today. Uh, I think that's all I have. I don't know if Sasha, if you have something else. No, I think that's it. Um, so the release cycle, uh, release cycle basically starts from yesterday and yeah, I still, I think we still did not finish the, uh, the release team completely, which is fine. Um, but we any, anyhow, we can just go ahead and do our job. <laughs> Yay. Great. So that's Yay. it. Awesome. Thanks for that update. Any questions for Veronica or Sasha? All right. Um, let's jump down to the open discussion items. There's only a few of them on here. Um, I added the first one. Uh, if anybody that attended KubeCon wanted to share any updates, I know some folks met. Um, if you want to give a kind of readout of that, I think it would be really useful for, for people who couldn't attend. Looks like Joseph added a, a link to Contributor Summit notes. You want to just summarize for us? I did it, but... Uh... Oh, okay. I, I, I could, or, you know, I was, I was actually going to suggest, because since James, you did ah, add James, a call go for it. action item, I believe. So, and, and I can, and I can probably provide some information on the, on the breakup, but I'll, I'll let James take the first part. Oh, sure. Um, 
So we we spoke about uh, two main things. Uh, Adolfo, my, my camera's having some trouble. Um, spoke first uh, about um, release engineering issue. Uh, I believe it was a continuing salsa container signing, or have I have I mixed mixed that up with a different discussion, perhaps? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes again to remind myself of what we said. I had so many discussions trying to remember which one is which. Is always you want to you want to start with um maybe with Monday's uh SIG release breakout yeah that's where we came out with an action item and then I think SIG meet and greet was more a lot more casual information but I think that's what you posted in channel yeah so um uh well one of the things I spoke about was I spoke about this is more of a kind of a SIG release general thing rather than release engineering thing uh but I spoke about the makeup of the release team uh this is a topic we've kind of discussed many times over the years and how we how we select the release team effectively the shadow process um the outcome of that discussion was a general agreement that we we should change something going forward for 126 we're not going to change anything for 125 it's a bit late for that um and we kind of had to talk about what the most effective way to do something was I posted a kind of straw man beginner proposal on the GitHub discussion and Sasha I think you suggested turning that into a cap so my current plan when I get any spare time at all is to turn that basically transplant what I wrote there into a, into a cap and then we can start talking about it with a view to to perhaps get something changed for 126 um for the 126 selection I should say um that's what that was about um we had a talk about, and this is, I'm not really sure if I should talk to this or not, um, the kind of release engineering track and what that looks like with release manager associates and release managers. Um, Joseph, you might be a better person to talk to that because I'm not a release manager associate, so I'm not too familiar with that side of things. I, I, think, what, I think between, um, so this kind of led into, we, we had great attendance at our breakout session on Monday. We had over 30 plus of uh, just all participating. So that, that was great. I was glad for us to be able to have that, you know, many people interested. I think the big thing that kind of came out was as we're making incremental improvements to the release team, um, a lot of times there's, there feels like there's not enough clarity about what's that ladder look like if I have an interest in becoming a release manager associate or release engineer. Um, and I think Adolfo, it kind of provided some feedback about there could be some areas of improvement, but it just, it feels like there's, there's a little bit of a, a gap. And I have not had a chance to go back and re-review our documentation to see that, but I think that's where most of the topics kind of revolved around. Um, I know a few other people here were at that meeting. I don't know if there was any other feedback or thoughts that you had around that topic, but I think the action item from that, uh, from the Dolphin side was let's come back, let's discuss, and let's see if we can make some incremental improvements on you know, how do I go from maybe the release team or if I'm interested in SIG release itself, basically? Yeah, so, so the, the pipeline from the release team to um, release engineering. So basically, I think if I remember correct, like in the past, it was uh, fine, but I don't know, we made some changes that right now we cannot apply to the release manager over the same form or something. And um, it's, I think, a couple of attendees also said they were not aware of any release uh, that even like this exists so that there's the release team manager associate role at all um so the right so the pipeline basically from team lead team leads from the release team like how to basically get them into release engineering this was also yeah, the question Yes. So that, I think that was kind of part of it was just, um, you know, providing some of that clarity. I think in the past we used to send out, or I think Daniel Mangum was the last time I remember an email going out saying, hey, if you want to apply, here's how you apply. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if we want to formalize it a little bit more and move the enhancements to the process into the into a enhancements or into a cap that we probably can also um, merge the release manager path into that as well so that we have something like an outline for both sides of sick release right 
or no you have your hand up would you like to speak uh, i don't think there is a process about being a release manager associate at this moment it was basically some kind of nomination after x time span around working on release tool so i think what happened in the past is we were basically i think stephen was trying to basically open the door to everyone interested in that and basically say if you're interested shadow a risk manager and you can learn from that person and later be nominated as an associate because there's a lot of involvement related to tooling maintenance so i think at the moment we don't, I don't think we want to spend many times on trying to define a policy for that. If someone is interested to be a risk manager associate, that person should just show up and say, oh, I'm interested how this is happening. And we try to onboard that person and try to give some instruction and basically say, oh, this is something you can do. This is something you, you can, and you will define a process. I while we were talking, I brought up uh, Gmail and was searching, and it looks like we did used to send out periodic pings to ask if folks were interested in becoming a release manager associate, but I think that was the kind of extent of the, like there wasn't, I'm trying to remember when we had something on the shadow application, because I think somebody mentioned that, um, when we had something on the shadow applications to explicitly say you wanted to be a release manager associate. Um, if anybody could find that, I think that would be useful to pull forward for some extra context as well. But I think uh, there's a lot of good comments here. And I definitely think that we could spend some time um, just solidifying, documenting it a little bit more so that the people are aware. Yeah, no, I agree. I, and I think, Arnold, I think you're right. Like a lot of times it is just showing up, mm -hmm. just being persistent, I think is, is, is important. And I think, like I said, I, I, I do have that email. I believe I still have it saved from uh, the last time I did see one, I will uh, share it in channel. And then maybe we can kind of, I, yeah, because I don't want to burn a lot of energy on it, but I just think just a little bit of a little clarity, I, I think could create a paid path for others. Yeah, and I think it's slightly different than just applying to be on the release teams where there, there isn't like an expectation that you're going to continue. Like, I, I think a lot of people come to the release teams in the shadow, and like there's not an expectation maybe that you're going to stick around for a long time. But in this uh, email from Stephen, I'm, look, I'm looking at one from, this is from April, 2020. And uh, he explicitly says, membership to the release managers group is considered permanent as opposed to quarterly contingent on you remaining active on the team. Uh, so I think there's just like a little bit different of a expectation of like what your commitment level is when you go that path versus the release team. So it's probably good to document all of that, just what the expectations are if we don't have that in the handbooks already. Yeah. And then I think just the only other thing that happened there was just a SIG meet and greet. You know, once again, a lot of, a lot of great attendance. Got to meet a lot of great shadows. Um, so it, it does, it, to me, it, it's, a, it's a healthy sign um, when we're getting all asked these questions and stuff when people are trying to learn more. So I think overall, it was a very, very positive experience. I didn't even realize SIG meeting was happening. I totally missed it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm glad everybody was able to meet. Uh, so one thing I miss about not being like not being able to go is the was in person get togethers where you can have impromptu discussions and come away with good action items like that. Any other thoughts or things people want to share from uh, from anything that? at KubeCon related to release engineering. All right, uh, the next item we have, um, we don't have a person next to it, but- um, That was dealing... me. Oh, all right, go for it. You wanna speak to this yeah. one? Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, I noticed recently that a few tickets were, or issues were closed um, automatically because they were in the state of Rotten. Uh, for too long and I was just curious if there's a process for for dealing with that because the items that I saw closed looked like they still needed action uh, so I'm just curious what what uh, how that normally goes 
Yeah. Uh, before I say anything, or no, you have your hand up still. Do you want to talk about this or is that just from before? Yeah, you had the signature. So I wanted no. to basically give Go for some it. kind of answer. So but the rule is if you are interested in an issue, open and close. If the issue is closed, open it and send it to yourself and ask question about it. I think that's the rule. There's no specific rule about reopen an issue. The issue just get closed because the bot assume there's no activity, which means there no one is interested or at the bandwidth to work on it. If you feel like there's a, your interest in that and you can't reopen the issue, ping me, I'll reopen it for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that one, um, if there are things that you see that you think are important and you'd like to come discuss them here, feel free to add them to the agenda and we can uh, can always have discussions about things and, and revisit. Like a lot of things get created and then maybe the priorities change or maybe people like uh, Arno mentioned don't have bandwidth to work on them. And there's there's lots of stuff to do and there's not that many people to do them. So things, uh, instead of just sticking around forever and not progressing, the bot does that. It, it goes and checks things. And if there hasn't been activity for n number of days, it moves them to stale and then it moves them to rotten and then it closes them. So there's like a period of time. Um, and maybe we review them as part of the backlog review, but again, like depends on how much time we spend in a, in a given meeting, how many topics there are. That's a great question though. So there, once in a while at test time, there will be a backlog review where uh, older tickers are being uh, being reviewed and uh, checked for that. Yeah, it depends on, um, like, I think we have tried to do over the last few release engineering meetings to do like a little bit of review, but we ended up not having a lot of dedicated time. Um, it might be worthwhile to do some, some dedicated backlog. Uh, that's probably a good task to for anybody that's looking for things to do to contribute like if you want to go review things on the boards and you and identify anything that you think is important that is getting handled by the bot and like move towards being automatically closed definitely identify those things and we can you can bring them as topics for next time and we can discuss those things Sorry about that. Any other, um, anything to add to the to this topic? Anybody, Sasha or anyone else? Cool. Uh, I did this one um, since we didn't have an agenda this time. Um, we had discussed previously um, closing these meetings or canceling them if there wasn't anything on the agenda. Uh, how do folks feel about that? If we we say like Monday, there's nothing on the agenda in the morning. Do we cancel? Do we hold the meetings? Um, I think there's there's benefit. Like if there's no agenda, then we could spend more dedicated time doing some review of of the project boards. Um, but also, if like necessarily people want to do that asynchronously, we don't have to do it in in a meeting like where everybody's on Zoom. Um, how do folks feel about that kind of policy? If we stick more more closely to that. I think on the Friday in the schedule, there is actually like a agenda closed item, which presumably I don't think no one ever follows. Yeah, I, th I think the, so Friday or Monday, like I think Friday agenda would like would be locked, but I mean, there's nothing to lock it, right? Like it's just, we would take a look at the Google document and see, um, and then Monday cancel uh, rather than like fumbling for ideas. Uh, I think it's a good use of our time to uh, like cancel things and like give people time back, but um, also it's a good meet. Like if we don't uh, meet regularly, then it's also not great. Uh, Grace, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking for new contributors who are interested in release engineering, I think just having the meeting is a good place uh, to meet people synchronously and like check up on things. Um, but for sure, if there's no agenda item, we can send something into the channel that says there's no agenda items and the meeting is, is more, you know, a working time or whatever. Uh, I want to, I agree with that because for me, I'm just uh, starting to join 
and I learn a lot from ju just the open discussions, things that come up uh, and ask simple things. Maybe they're, they're simple, but uh, for others, they might be uh, very much routine. Um, so personally, I like it that, that uh, the opportunity is there. So I agree with that. Yeah, even like the bit, oh, sorry, Joseph, your hand up. Joseph first and then James. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, do, I, do, I do like high value meetings and I do like meetings that are planned out ahead of time. That's just because my, my schedule is so tight. So when I don't see agendas or come into it, I'm always like cancel because it's more valuable. But, but I, I agree, I think there's some value in this, you know, and maybe as we mature, maybe we, we don't always do it or maybe make a call out. Um, but reviewing the boards would be good or like what we just talked about earlier. I think here's opportunity for what, like Matthias was asking a question about these life cycle rotten issues. You know, it also shows some initiative as opportunity for us to kind of come forward and, and bring these things out. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm 50 50 on it. So I can't imagine saying I could go, I could go either way. But I did talk to Adolfo about this because I was asking him, I'm like, I, I was saying, hey, dude, what, what happened to the bot? I don't see the messaging. And I didn't realize it was Adolfo was just doing it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, I'm going to try to go forward and make sure that, you know, I think a little bit of like, make sure the meeting agenda is updated make sure people have a link maybe since we're doing a lot of recordings and they're coming up pretty timely we could link in the previous recording we could find ways to try to like generate a lot of more um you know prep ahead of time to allow people to just step in go for it james and then uh, i want to go back to something joseph said uh, i was just going to say that i think it is valuable just to hang out like even just that little bit the few minutes before the recording starts where we're just chatting i think it's pretty valuable to actually like feel integrated into the community you know actually getting to know people a little bit but whether that's value enough to consider winning it when we don't have any gender items I don't know. okay so um one thing i think that was uh cool about what joseph talked about or what i kind of maybe came to mind while you were talking i think it would be useful and maybe this is something that folks can can volunteer to do um just kind of like shepherd the agenda before the meeting um it doesn't necessarily have to be like the same person every week we could rotate this through kind of like we try to do with note takers but um maybe ping ping the channel on fridays to say like hey do you have anything you want to add to this agenda um, is there anything that people are looking for maybe that's looking at the stale items and identifying anything that is worth talking about um, Hey, Stephen, you join. Speaking of Stephen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I remember that at some point, um, my memory remembers this, but I don't remember the, the exact formal way that he said it. But at some point he said that any one of us could call uh, could could cancel the meeting if we if we thought that there was not enough a quorum or agenda or whatever um it didn't matter if it was just walking the board or whatever so um i i had that understanding um <laughs> and just wanted to say that that it didn't yeah. require like either steven or or adolfo or anyone specific to to be the ones to cancel yeah, so there is a so there is an agenda item um, or there's a meeting invite uh, that is in the calendar for Friday, I want to say every Friday um, that calls for uh, the agenda items, basically, for the meeting. Um, and if by that point, so it's Friday at six. Um, yeah, it's Friday at six uh, Eastern. So at that point, if no one has added agenda topics, then we should um, we should think about uh, clearing the meetings for the next the following week. Um, so we have not been uh, good about following that practice, um, but I think for the sake of uh, you know distribution and uh, so the reason it's on. So Arno mentioned in the chat, uh, can we move it to Monday? The reason it's on uh, Friday is because the SIG leads meet on Monday uh, to go over agenda topics as well. So if they're so in between between if you have not 
added anything to the agenda and we don't feel like there's anything to add to the agenda, then that's that's the meeting at which we should make the call uh, to cancel. That said, we do that meeting bi-weekly now instead of weekly. So let's kick around some ideas um, if we wanna change how that works because we currently don't do the notional version of how it should work anyway. Yeah, I think there was some, before you joined, there was some discussion about the utility of having like a board, like a, if we don't have any agenda items, just having a dedicated time to walk through the board and look at look at stuff. I think doing that once in a while would be useful. Um, like I, if we don't have agenda items every week, it's not worthwhile to do that every week, but maybe once a month or every other month or something, it's probably useful to spend some time because we don't always get to the point where we can do that review of the board because we end up having a lot of topics. So let's, um, the, the different idea uh, or similar idea, combined idea maybe. Um, given that we currently do the meetings, um, one, I think, one I think we'll have to see in the next few months or so, it's very possible that this time slot will stop working as well for a lot of us. I think it's already starting to get tricky for a few folks. Um, but given that it is currently the same time slot, at least for now, um, and we also kind of blur the lines between whether it's, whether it's release engineering or SIG release globally, um, it doesn't make sense to call this a SIG release meeting and just say that the SIG release meetings are weekly and whatever agenda topics kind of bubble up are the ones that bubble up. I think the release engineering part is um, fundamental and uh, and talked about frequently enough in the release uh, in, in the release general meetings um, that it's a topic that I think we're going to see regardless of what week it is. Um, so tossing that one out there to, to to chew on as well. That's a great idea too. I think uh, we we even see the uh, the other direction, right? Like at this meeting, people bring up things that would maybe otherwise be SIG release general meeting fodder. Okay. So given that, and, and we don't have to make the decision here, I think we will we'll put it out on the mailing list and, and chew on it for a little bit. Um, Kenya, there are, uh, if I look at, let me look at the calendar really quickly. Um, I know there are uh, occasionally other meetings that vie for the slot too, like, uh, if you wanted to attend the CNCF TOC meeting, for example, you can't because um, we're, we're, we're landed right on the same slot. So in addition to calling these the same meeting, um, what about skewing the meeting times a little bit? Because um, I know it's early for, uh, it's, it's fine for East Coast, uh, US East and for uh, European time and, um, not to exclude any time zones, but um, we usually tend to think in in uh, in, in uh, uh, European uh, U.S. East and U.S. West. Um, but everything involved. Um, the what about the same meeting but time skew? Uh, one that's maybe more focused on uh, Euro European times and one that's closer and more convenient for U.S. West. Uh, you were muted, maybe. No. I know I was talking, I was muted because it popped up. Um, so what you're suggesting is is alternating the meetings time zone wise. So one would be, one week would be all East Coast European time friendly and one would be West Coast other time zone friendly. Right. Yeah, I think for me, like if this meeting was, this time slide is, sometimes just a little later yeah. yeah like if it was just a little later or it was a little bit earlier maybe like an hour earlier and that'd be really early for me but like personally yeah. it would be easier <laughs> because like i'm right this time slot i'm like just getting home from dropping kids off at school and it's like it's a rush sometimes and, yeah um, so so i think the advantage that that kind of affords us too is that we've got um so we've got sasha and uh and carlos who are who are uh european Based, and then uh, you, myself, Porco, 
uh, leads wise that are kind of shifting closer to that that U.S. East and 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 U.S. West. Um, so this might be an, an, an a good opportunity to kind of uh, share the hosting duties a little bit more um, equally, as well as uh, give an opportunity for a few more people to pop in uh, based on the times. Um, so if people are into that, maybe let's. Um, uh, I don't know who wants to take the ball on this, um, starting an issue, uh, starting a discussion issue. I can do it. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and let's do, I would say, let's do a, should we do a discuss? Nah, let's do an issue, because this is something that we're going to action on uh, eventually, instead of a discussion, right? Um, and then let's hold it open for uh, until the next release, quote unquote, release engineering meeting. Two weeks then. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll open that this morning. Does that sound good to folks? Cool. Are there other meeting e things that we could be tweaking? Doesn't sound like it. Cool. And yeah. and uh, everyone. No, no, sorry. sorry. Did we agree on what we want to do if there's no issue in the agenda? If there's no. We agenda. cancel. We cancel. Can we can we do a board review instead? Uh yeah, we can. Because we had the conversation before we trained about the value of do of doing a board review if there is no item in the agenda because we can identify blo possible blocker on the specific issue or open the room for new people to drop questions during the meeting because Slack can be daunting for some people. So okay, so, so here's, so I'm going to back up there a little bit. Um, everyone who is assigned to an issue um, should be doing reviews of their own issues. Their issues should naturally be flowing through the board through to completion. If those things are getting blocked, they should potentially be listed as an agenda topic for the meeting. And then we have agenda topics for the meeting so the meeting doesn't get canceled, right? I think that there is, um, I agree in the value of doing the boardwalk during the meeting, but also to be realistic, um, the boardwalk has been on our meeting agendas for a while now um, mm -hmm. across all of our meetings. And it is a thing that is infrequently done. Um, there is uh, there is a, a large amount of context that you kind of have to page in for any one particular issue, especially if it's in progress or we don't know the state of it and and kind of trying to page that that context in in the course of a meeting just to say like is this a go a no go uh, who has to action on it that is that is stuff that you know really those are things that should be be happening asynchronously. Um, the the when we're walking in the the meeting ideally like we're gonna hit the the blocked the status of the of the board first, right? And we're going to try to get those unblocked, right? Um, so so what would be helpful is is the team getting things to the place where they are in block status or they're waiting for something, right? That needs to get unstuck. Um, the if we were to start from the top of the board um, and go through in progress in every meeting, we wouldn't get anything done. Yeah, and conversely, we end up spending a lot of time on agenda items a lot of times and like we bypass the boardwalk and go to the discussion items first so we can have those discussions. And then like today, even though we didn't have a lot of things on the agenda, we're running up on the end of the meeting now and there's that doesn't leave a lot of time to do like a real thorough review of the board. So you end up with only the chance to really look at those blocked items. So maybe that's a good action item for everybody else to just if you have things assigned um, and they are truly blocked, please put them in block status so we can more easily identify them. Yeah. If you were on any team with a named role or something um, and you have stuff on the on the board, um, the, the the goal is really to get those things to completion um, and let us know if you're, you're unable to so that we can help out with that. 
Um, and, and because we are a global team, it, that is something that is very difficult to do in, in a synchronous meeting, unless it is a quick, like, Hey, we need a leads decision on foo bar bass. Right. Um, so let's, I, I think, you know, there's more work that we can be doing on cleaning up the, uh, I think the shape of the boards, um, and I can take that as an action. Um, but it, I think it really is about doing some of that work asynchronously. All right, um, five minutes left. Anybody have any other topics? Uh, or otherwise we can just end early. I will open an issue to discuss the or to take action on the meeting cadence and frequency and post that into the channel today. All right, hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, hope everybody stays healthy and doesn't come down with any cube COVID or anything else. And uh, have a great week. Take it easy, everyone. Thanks, yeah.